what is going on everybody welcome back to another video um this is one that i wanted to record you guys obviously clicked on it because you saw the title and everything going over the wheel strategy and i want to go over exactly how i do it and the little tweaks that you can make and basically how to make it a little bit better and what is it and how it works so there is the basic strategy then there's little tweaks that you can make on your own to make things a little bit better so with that being said I want to jump right into this video and waste none of you guys time I've been getting dirty money. so the wheel strategy so step one is obviously going to be finding a stock that you want to do this on now a key point of the strategy and I tell this to everybody but nobody ever wants to listen to this point is make sure it's on a stock that you like and that you want to own that is a key point in this strategy and I don't understand why people don't see it. they want to go for high premiums and things like that once they learn it but they're not going it's got to be a stock for instance I did a video the other day, um, it was about O, which is O Realty. If you love real estate, then that's probably a stock you like to own for those dividends. Um, if you just want to be an indexing person, you know, SPY, QQQ. Now, those are a little bit more expensive. I'm going to show you how I kind of got around that when I first started doing this. So, step one is selling a put. Now, what you're selling the option to somebody in the market now a call is your if you buy a call you're hoping the market goes up in a certain amount of time when before that contract expires if you're buying a put you're betting that the stock market goes down or that underlying which means stock or equity is going to go down in that time frame before the contract expires all options are a contract it's a very important piece of information so what you're going to do is you're going to sell a put now, to, the number one question I get all the time is, well, I can't afford to go do QQQ or Spy or, you know, Coca-Cola or some of these other ones. Um, I've done a few of them. This is the one that I started on, so I'm going to show you guys just an example today on this one. But another one is that I just recently have started doing this on is PLTR. It's Planter. Now, I have it right here. You're looking at about $17. I sold the 16. That's why I have it marked here on this chart. You guys don't have to do that. You can find other stocks. I've done some other videos, and I'm sure I'm going to do more videos in the future about where to start with this. So that is a starting point, finding some stocks that you like. Now, again, best advice there, again, I'm not a financial advisor, is find stocks that you like and that you want to own for a very long time. That's going to help you out. They're good companies. They're moving forward. Don't do penny stocks on this just forewarning um, but again that first step is selling a put so vice versa of what I was talking about the put you're gonna sell it to somebody you're basically betting that it's not gonna get hit and you're gonna collect all the premium for somebody so whatever you sell that option at is called premium guys think of insurance you pay a premium every single month on your car insurance or your home insurance and then that money just goes to them because nothing ever happens to your car or your house for a very very large majority of the time that one percent of the time that things do happen you get a little bit money back but how much money are you really putting into insurance before you ever get it back especially with cars um with that being said when you get assigned so basically you're going to go into this on wanting to own this stock but you don't want to own it at the price that it's at you want to own it or you do but you want to get it at an even lower price possibly so the best example for this <coughs> mm, that came out of nowhere i'm sorry guys so we're going to trade options on qqq it's at 44.85 i don't want to buy it at 44.85 i'm not going to lie to you um you may want to i don't so i'm going to sell and i'm doing this on robin because this is where 95 percent of you guys are going to i'm going to go to a put and i'm going to go out 47 days um uh, maybe 40 days is probably where I'm looking at honestly I just covered some of these on Friday but so you can get out here a good little chunk and this will give you the percentage chance of profit right here at the top um, I like to go out to that 20 percent or 15 to 20 percent is where I'm really happy because it is a leveraged ETF so we're gonna go 20 percent I'm gonna collect 84 dollars now I am risking you guys got to look at these numbers my max loss is right here 
It means everything goes to zero. But I'm going to collect $84 if the stock never comes down to $39. Guys, now, in my defense, I did get further out. So the one that I just covered, I entered about two weeks ago, and I covered it for 50% of the profit. I don't hold till expiration date. But I was at like 32 so you can get even further out here and increase. So you can go to a 10% and collect $20 for that 47 days. Um, I'm going to go up here to this probably about the 20% mark. Yeah, I like this. You're going to at least click $77. I actually like the one that we were talking about earlier better. This is just me. You guys don't have to do this. I'm going to go to 39 I'm going to collect $84. Now, again... I sell these on red days too, just so you guys know. It allows you to get further out of the money on those 20% moves or whatever because of implied volatility. That's neither here nor there or something you need to be looking into at this exact second, but it is something just to think about. Now, again, we're going to go back to here. So we sold that, and we get assigned at our $39 option. So now we own 100 shares at $39, guys. This is a very, very important part so we're going to go to tqqq i think i had it over there on the side but it's okay and we are going to grab this and this is just a way to keep track of it for this video it was a 39 and go back over here to 39 it's pretty close so i'm betting that the option is not going to come or this stock is not going to come all the way back down here to 39 within how many days we go 40 yeah 40 days so actually tomorrow would be 39 so again it varies day by day it goes down obviously um, but then say we get hit and now we own the stock at 39 dollars and again this is something that's important so now we own it at 39 guys look at this if you believe in the u.s economy and the stock market guys this is one that it mimics the cues it's just a leverage etf I've made bukus of money off this, guys. I think my annual return rate off of this one on the money that I deployed just to this stock is just over 20%. I love this stock. I've been put to it many times. I start selling covered calls. Now, again, that's where this strategy comes into. Now, once we own the 100 shares, we now can sell a call against this. Now, this is something that's pretty important in the part of it. Make sure you want to own the stock. So I'm going to get rid of this, and then you're literally just going to flip-flop the other way. Now, these are going to roughly be around the same. They're probably going to be a little bit less, but we're going to sell a call. Now, if we were looking at near the money, now what I do is, say for instance, I got called it at the 44. I'm going to go, or at the 45, I'm going to go sell it at the 45 meaning for exactly what i bought it for i'm gonna sell it for because i'm gonna hope that i'm going to collect all 258 and that means it only took me well this is i'm actually going to do this on a weekly scale i'm gonna go five days and i'm gonna collect 110 dollars for five days if it doesn't go through i'm gonna collect 110 dollars so this dollar 10 is 110 dollars you just got to multiply it because each contract is worth 100 shares. And then this is all hypothetical. It gets called away. You sold this call now, and now you have it gets called away and you own no shares. You just start the process over. Now, at the beginning of the video, I was talking about some key points and you know how I do some things to make myself a little bit better and why I don't get put to the option so many times or basically get i that way i don't have to own the shares basically is what i'm saying is because i will sell a credit spread first thing now this isn't i still keep the money that i would have to buy for all the 100 shares in the account but buying power is a different thing to me because i do make some weekly trades and some monthly trades me i'm going to want to go 40 days out again and this is what you're going to call a credit spread it's a little bit more advanced but something that i'm going to do to minimize my risk and this is not something that everybody does or you have to do it's something that i do and i need to make sure this is a put so when i come in here to do this and i'm selling my option like we said this one right here what i do is then i turn around and buy one 
Now, this is called a credit spread, but it's got to be lower than the one I got. So it's 39. It's got to be lower. And I'm usually going about a five-point spread. So this is a 39, 38, 37, 36, 35. I would go about a 34 here. And what happens is, is my max profit's only $56. But look what happens to my max loss and my buying power is the difference. So if I want to continue here, it's not... Yeah, so my max loss basically is my buying power minus the total credit that I'm getting. So it's really going to tie up $400. And why do I do this? Why would you ever do this? Because, you know, you still want to own it at those shares. Why do I do it? Is because I'm going to get some premium off of this one. Because I bought this one. What's going to happen is this option right... Oh, wrong one. This option right here, if I'm wrong on the credit spread and on the wheel strategy, this one right here is going to go up in value and I'm going to sell this one. So if I bought it for 32 cents, I'm going to sell it. If that one goes in the money, I'm probably going to sell it for double or maybe even triple and say I get 60 cents. Well, I made 30 cents off of it right there. So that's $30 net profit on just that option. But then I still own this put, which means I'm going to get the shares. So I do this before they expire. You, that's a key point in this. you got to do it before it expires, and then you come back, and then I'm going to get put the shares, but I'm still going to collect all $84. And then I own the shares, and then I start running the covered call. Now, why do I do this? And it's just a little itty-bitty step that a lot of people don't worry about on these things. Now, why do I do it? Because it's extra money it didn't tie up buying power it actually reduced my buying power quite a bit on these and i'm able to make you know an extra 30 to 50 bucks depending on how much that option moves and how much they go in the money and things like that and really another thing that it really prevents me from and this is something that i absolutely love because i'm a person that is skeptical about the economy 99 percent of the time i'm not going to lie to anybody about it that the economy if the economy crashes Worst case scenario, I lose $400. I'm okay. If the stock tanks and goes to zero tomorrow, I'm only out 400 bucks. I get to keep all the rest of my cash that I was going to run the wheel strategy on, but the next Armageddon or whatever the case may be, the crash of whatever goes on, I'm only out 400 bucks. I'll take a $400 hit on my portfolio every single time. And, and rather than a 50% haircut on my entire portfolio or that portion of my portfolio that I use for TQQQ or SPY or any of those. Yes, this is a strategy that anybody can do. It's available to everybody as long as you have the cash to buy 100 shares, which and this is something, though, that you can't do in your 401k. You can do it in a lot of IRAs and things like that. I'm not a tax professional. Get with them if you want to talk about anything like that. But this is something that people aren't doing that they should be doing. Guys, this is a simple strategy that even Warren Buffett, the oracle himself, RIP Charlie Munger, they they do this as well in Brookshire Hathaway. They own an insurance company so that they can leverage more and buy more shares of companies as well. Guys, it's not all bad. You can do options, but just be the house on the options. Don't be the sucker. You can be on the sucker side of things. I've been on the sucker side of things. Don't be the sucker. Be the casino. That way, you can consistently profit and make more income. With that being said, thank you guys all for watching. I hope this helps somebody else out there. And I think that one tip will help somebody dramatically. If you're that one person, comment below. I'd love to hear from you, and we will get in touch.